We have here a 2003 Volkswagen Jetta with a 1.9 liter TDI with the solid and reliable ALH engine. And the customer's complaint is it lacks power. Okay, here is the auto scan on this Jetta. And the trouble codes that we did get were 16683, boost pressure regulation PO299, control range not reached. But I did test drive the vehicle and it has very low power. But I took some graphs of it while I was test driving it, so let's take a look at those graphs. Okay, this is the graph taken of group 11, which is boost related stuff. Uh, during a wide open throttle pull in second gear, you kind of slow down in second gear and then you're going on. Now, pretty much RPM is kind of important, but you really don't need RPM and you really don't need the duty cycle of the cylinder. What you're looking at is the green specified boost and the yellow actual boost. And what you would expect to see. is boost coming up relatively fast but what we see is it takes one two three four graticules before boost even reaches its maximum point and then it flatlines and its maximum point isn't even near requested usually a good system would come up really fast in one or one and a half graticules and by the way it does matter what you have your time setting based on we have a, I usually put it at 15 here so that does matter because you can't compare one that's set at 15 to one that's not at 15. So boost should come up in about one or two, maybe one and a half graticules. It usually will overshoot like this and then it'll come under control and stay reasonably near specified until you back out of the throttle. That's a good working boost system. Now, this obviously, it isn't boost, building boost fast enough. It isn't building enough boost. But what's causing the problem is the important part. And you can't tell that from here. I think the first thing we're going to do is pull this elbow pipe out and see if the intake has significant clogging in there. I'm looking in there, and there is some carbon buildup, but it isn't very bad at all. I do not think carbon buildup is the problem on this car. Okay, the next check we do on a low power problem or a boost related problem is to check the N75 to make sure it's got a vacuum supply and that it's able to control vacuum. And the test I do is here and we use the output tests of the of VAGCOM. We use the output tests of VAGCOM in order to uh, check that. Okay, you have to have the engine running in order to do an output test on an ALH. As you can see, the solenoid is capable of controlling vacuum. It's able to turn it on. It's able to vent it and make it go to zero. And uh, because it's running off the reservoir, it uh, drops down a little bit each time because the engine isn't running turning the vacuum pump. So obviously the solenoid is working. Okay, our next check is to hook to the vacuum hose that's going down to the turbo that is going down to the turbo actuator and we pump it up to make sure it's holding vacuum. And it is. And it you could take it all the way to about 25 or so. It's kind of hard to do that with a hand vacuum pump. It might be leaking just ever so slightly on this one. But that isn't our problem. It's obviously holding vacuum good enough to where the computer can control. Um, but the next step is to, and I've already put the light down in there, 
you, you could do this from the top of the car. I might show you from the bottom of the car also. But you look down at the turbo and see if the lever is moving while you pump up the vacuum. So you're probably not going to be able to see that as I'm going to see it. So I'm just going to have Cortland video the process and then we'll show you underneath the car after we rack it. Okay, I'm sticking the mirror down here where I can see the turbo actuator lever and then I'm going to pump it up and I'm seeing no movement at all down there, none. See I have 20 inches of vacuum approximately. I pumped it up, there's very little movement in the lever, virtually none, so the veins on the turbo are stuck. I've already done one video on this problem. Unfortunately that probably means we're going to need to pull this turbo and clean the veins on it just like we did in the other video. We'll go ahead and rack the car and see if we can show you a little bit, a little bit better what I was seeing in the mirror. Okay, I'm now underneath the car and I'm doing the same test again that I did above the car. I'm testing the movement of the lever on the VNT of the turbo and I just want you to be able to see what I was seeing when I was looking in the mirror. So I'm putting a vacuum gauge on the turbo actuator and I'm going to show you whether or not it's moving. Okay, we're looking up through a hole there where we can see the lever of the turbo actuator. And if I zoom in there, that lever should move as I pump up the vacuum. The vacuum gauge is going to be blurry, but I'm pumping now. I don't know if you can hear that, but I've pumped it all the way up. I'm going to zoom back out. There's our vacuum. You can see there's no movement in the lever. And then I'm going to release the vacuum abruptly. No movement in the lever. You can just barely see some movement in the rod. And that indicates that it is at least trying to move, but the lever won't move at all. At this point in the diagnosis, we were sure that the veins were stuck and that it was causing our PO299 trouble code. As we were pulling the turbo on this car, we did make a how to remove a turbo video. So if you want to see how to remove the turbo on an ALH TDI, click the link in the upper right hand corner right there. We have done a similar video on a turbo that had the vein stuck. That one was triggering a PO234 trouble code for overboost condition because the veins on that one were stuck in the high boost position and on the current turbo we're working on the veins were stuck in the low boost position. So if you want to watch that video, click the link right up there. And okay, we did have to use our rosebud tip on the torch in order to heat this. We could not get it to tap out. If you want to know the technique for getting this out, uh, see my other video link to in the cards up there. But we did have to heat this all the way around here in order to get the thing to come out. The funny part about it was we were tapping on it. Didn't put a lot of effort into it, but we were tapping on it. It would not budge. We put some heat around the outside. First tap, it just fell out of the hole. So definitely if you uh, can't get this out, apply heat. Don't butcher the thing up by beating the crap out of it. And uh, you're probably not going to get it with a propane torch. You probably need a, a real oxyacetylene torch in order to do it. Maybe with a rosebud tip too due to the size of the object that you're working on. Um, anyway, I'm trying to demonstrate here that the, the ring is seized. So these are the levers that operate the veins and those are the veins right in there. This is all just a side note. Done! Cut! Got it nice and freed up. As we were going back together, we made some basic checks, and what we come to the conclusion of is that this actuator is also seized up. I demonstrated earlier in the video that the veins were stuck. The lever would not move that, that actuates the veins, but this actuator is stuck also. Can you get that in the shot? Go ahead and pump. You can see there, he's pumping the vacuum pump up, but there is no movement in the, in the arm there. So go ahead and release it abruptly. See, it just barely moves. So this is locked up also, and this is a common scenario. When, the, when there's, like if there's no vacuum to the actuator, 
then the actuator doesn't move and the, and the driver keeps driving it that way, then the vanes never move so they carbon up real bad and they stick in that position. Or if the diaphragm's bad inside the actuator, then once again the vanes never move and they stick in that position. In this situation, the diaphragm's not bad, the vacuum was hooked up but it's actually seized up right in there so it never moved and then the vanes stuck. So we put a new actuator on, luckily we are a TDI specialty shop and we keep that actuator in stock and he's gonna, can you get that, yeah pump that up there and you can now see the actuator is moving release it abruptly okay we have finished up the turbo on our Jetta we took it for a road test and the power was back it ran really good the uh, I did take a graph of the boost and it was uh, the boost was working very very good on the graph this is not the actual graph that I took of it. Uh, the customer was wanting their car and um, I was in a hurry and stuff and I didn't have time to save the graph and, and take a video of it and stuff. But this is a graph that I had on file of very, very good working ALH boost control. And you can see here that actual boost comes up and overshoot specified boost and then it comes under control nearly perfectly on this one. The car that we just fixed, the graph was not the, as perfect as this one, but it was in good shape and uh, should provide them um, uh, the, all the power they need and not trigger any trouble codes. Now let's compare this real quick to our other graph that we took of that car beforehand. You can see on this one uh, specified boost comes up but actual boost doesn't come up. It comes up very 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 slowly taking one, two, three, four graticules to get that high and that is a problem and that will trigger a low boost trouble code or maybe even the low boost trouble code triggered because of uh, this boost never re reaching specified so once again our good working one literally comes up into full boost and overshoots within one and a half graticules and that is of course with the pixel shift set at 15 so I'm gonna call this a fix if you learned anything from this video and you'd like to contribute to the continued production of these videos, then find the donate icon on my website and don't forget to click like and subscribe. I got the good stuff now. No virus for me. If you want to watch a cool video, watch the Millennial vs. Boomer video here. And here's another good video you could watch, and don't forget to click the subscribe button.